I was in such a pain point of hopping from job to job at unfulfilling jobs I didn't like. And I saw everyone was so miserable. And I knew that was my future if I didn't make a change. Everybody just thinks that you could put a month of work and it's like, dude, I worked really hard on that. Like, no, you yeah. didn't. Like, go put in six months of free work and build something up from nothing and then go monetize it. Then you could tell me you put in the work. Pick one skill that you have interest in and that there is market demand for. Because if you have an interest in it, you can learn. You're going to stay focused on it. You're going to stay consistent with it. The big secret is a lot of these big accounts with like 500k followers plus, they, they're not making any money. They're struggling because... Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of the Virtual Ventures Podcast. I'm your host, Andres Sanchez, and today we have a truly exceptional guest joining us. Please give a warm virtual welcome to remarkable Dakota Robertson. In episode 15, we deep dive into the world of entrepreneurship and personal brand building with Dakota, a true force to be reckoned with. With over five 500,000 followers on social media, Dakota has made a name for himself as a highly successful ghostwriter, creator of The Growth Ghost, and an influential ghostwriting coach. We are thrilled to have Dakota share his expertise and invaluable insights on building a thriving online presence, mastering the art of ghostwriting, and cultivating a loyal audience. Join us as we explore Dakota's journey, uncovering the secrets behind his impressive accomplishments and the strategies he employs to help others succeed in the competitive realm of ghostwriting. Whether you're an aspiring ghostwriter, a content creator, or simply intrigued by the world of personal branding, this episode is packed with practical wisdom and inspiration that will leave you motivated to take your own virtual ventures to new heights. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and get ready for an unforgettable conversation with the exceptional Dakota Robertson. Let's embark on this virtual journey together. I hope you all enjoy this episode. Welcome back to the Virtual Ventures Podcast. I am your host, Andres Sanchez. Today, we are joined by Dakota Robertson. Growth Ghosts is the company he has founded. Dakota is known for his ghostwriting on Twitter and is well known across the community. Dakota, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Yeah, thank you for having me, brother. I am stoked to talk about whatever. <laughs> awesome, man. I love that. I like to just get the ball rolling right off the bat. Tell us a little bit about who Dakota is. Give us a little bit of background on your journey, and then we'll dive into the good stuff. Yeah, so I guess a uh, brief synopsis. I was on Twitter in 2018 because I kept up to date with crypto, and that's where all the news was. I stumbled upon a Twitter growth course in September of 2020. At the time, I was in my second year of college to be a high school teacher. And yeah, I went through the course. I like, screw it. It's 40 bucks. Went through it. Um, thought it was interesting growing a Twitter account. I tried other stuff in the past like eBay flipping, iPhone repair, Amazon FBA, blogging, all that stuff. Uh, but this seemed more interesting to me. So I gave it a go. I uh, started writing on Twitter, grew to like 750 followers in three months and just didn't really see much traction. Eventually figured it out. And I realized I was learning more on Twitter than I was in college. So <laughs> I decided to drop out of college and I quit my job at Domino's at the time. And I went all in on Twitter as like, screw it. I'm going to make it work no matter what. And yeah, so restarted my account too. Made it a writing account because that's where my interest was. And I saw that there's people doing well with it. And eventually, like tw one year in, grew to 12,000 followers. Um, during that time, I hired Dan Co as a mentor and he helped me monetize ghostwriting. And basically, yeah, launched my offer in November of 2021 and scaled to like 11K a month within 28 days of launching. Wow. Uh, then scaled my ghostwriting business up from there. Uh, grew my audience. I think it's at like 400K total. That's um, amazing. And now... I teach others how to start their own ghostwriting business. That's my main focus and just educating people on writing. So awesome, in a man. sense, I became a high school teacher <laughs> just on the internet. <laughs> I love that. I love the way to kind of wrap that up. I mean, there's a lot to unpack there. Let's start with how did you feel when you quit your job and you quit school? Like, were you feeling a little scared, a little nervous? Were you confident that you were going to pull through? Let's kind of start there. Yeah. So I kind of had this maybe delusional confidence in myself. Uh, because I don't know, it's just that pain of, 
I was in such a pain point of hopping from job to job at unfulfilling jobs I didn't like. And I saw everyone was so miserable and I knew that was my future if I didn't make a change. So I was, I didn't know how, but I knew I was going to make it work. Like it just felt like I can figure this out. And yeah, I also had a cushion because I made quite a bit from crypto and it was starting to pop off because I used to be an electrician and I threw all my paychecks into crypto. And at the time, crypto started, it was the start of that big bull run of like 20. 2021, 2022, and it's just yeah. starting to go up. So I had this nice cushion of money uh, that I knew I could withdraw some crypto funds if I needed it, but I didn't. But yeah, so I, I felt I felt good. I think it might have been different if I had like zero dollars in the bank account. I had like eight k yeah. in the bank account, ten k or something. And uh, yeah, I was just like, I'm gonna make this work. And I procrastinated for a while on Twitter. I got caught in okay, gonna keep writing, keep growing my account, and all that, but I didn't monetize it until. I took the leap and I, I was like, okay, it's been almost a year on Twitter now and I haven't really made money other side aside from a little bit of affiliate marketing. And that's when I was like, okay, I got to make a move. Like I really got to do this. I got to figure this out. I'm down to like 8K in my bank account and I really got to figure this out. So that's when I slowly becoming friends with Dan Co and found out he had a coaching program and I spent like 6K on a coaching program with him. And that's what lit a fire under my ass. Like, okay, I got to figure this out. Yeah. And that's what kind of prompted me to, really get my stuff together and just having that confidence you know like someone's got your back or to show you the way because i didn't really know what i was doing i still don't know half the time but that was huge for me and then since then i've paid for a lot of mentors in other areas where i need guidance and uh, it's been a game changer for me but yeah i definitely like throughout the whole journey i definitely had a lot of self-doubt i had to overcome especially with like sales, making a landing page and actually like writing content a lot of the time. But um, overall, I knew I knew I would figure it out or I've had this feeling I would figure it out. And I think that has been huge for me because I just knew there's no other alternative. There's no way I was going to do something else. For sure. It's almost like a, something non-negotiable, like you need yeah. to follow through with it. I love the mentor portion. If you've heard any other episodes and for people listening that um, tune in, I love mentors. I have had a ton of success with mentors growing businesses I had prior and this podcast itself. So that's something I really I want to touch on. But I want to go back a little bit to what we were talking about there. You said you were growing Twitter, but you weren't monetizing it. What did you have to do for people listening who are probably in the same position? What did you have to do to begin to monetize it? Let's kind of hyper focus on that portion and what it looked like, because I'm sure it wasn't start monetizing now. And then 10 days later, I'm making 10,000 plus a month. Yeah, yeah. So the one thing, I mean, with that Twitter guide I bought in the first place, uh, it didn't have good information in it, like basics in it, but it wasn't good because, and and the reason I struggled to grow, let alone monetize, was because I was saying the same stuff as everybody else. So you go on Twitter or social media in general, everybody's saying the same thing. These fortune cookie tweets, like if you believe you can achieve and all that stuff. And if you're saying all of that, one, you blend in with everybody else. So you're just a commodity. So why would people follow you? And then two, even if you do get traction, if you're in a bunch of engagement groups or, or whatever, how are you going to monetize? Like yeah. You're not proving your competence at anything. If someone is a motivational account and they're, they go to sell I don't know, consulting services for something like, I don't know, sell a product or whatever. It just doesn't align because the people you attracted, they just follow you for motivational quotes or whatever. So uh, yeah. there is a really, the big secret is a lot of these big accounts with like 500K followers plus, they, they're not making any money. They're struggling because they just put out fluffy content and nobody sees them as an authority in anything. And so they struggle to monetize. It's way better to have a thousand followers that see you as an authority in some domain than 500k followers where you're just saying fluffy stuff. So the one thing I would say <clears throat> that really sets the foundation for somebody is pick one skill that has you have interest in and that there is market demand for. So for myself, for example, I had an interest in writing. I didn't have to be amazing at it. I was decent at it, but you don't have to be even decent at it. You can learn because if you have an interest in it, you can learn. You're going to stay you're going to stay focused on it. You're going to stay consistent with it. So that's the main thing is you have to have an interest in some kind of skill and then there has to be market some kind of market demand for it because i could have an extreme interest in i don't know knitting but if i go to monetize that it, it's going to be it could potentially be pretty hard to monetize so you want to make sure there's an alignment with those two things so 
find something yeah, you have interest in, something that there's market demand for. And if you need to help finding that, you can ask other family members or friends, what do you know me as? Or what am I good at? Or what do you think I could monetize or something like that? Because a lot of the times we look at our own life and we, oh, that's nothing special or whatever, but it helps to get that outside perspective. But in this case, I knew, okay, I'm decent at writing. I want to learn it. I have an interest in it. I know there's market demand. Let me give this a go. And yeah, so I started studying writing books, taking courses, all that jazz for YouTube videos. And I started learning it. And I started teaching it on the timeline. What I was, I was playing what I was learning and I was teaching on the timeline. And that way I was growing an audience that was interested in writing. At the same yeah. time, I was proving my competence and raising my authority, showing actual tips, threads, all of that. And so I, I built my reputation as that writer. And I did this for a while. And then I got Dan Coe's coaching and I knew, okay, I want to monetize with writing. Uh, so we like pieced together an offer that was around ghostwriting because I actually built my own account. It was writing focused. And since I built up that audience and when I launched my offer for the ghostwriting, uh, people already saw me as an authority. So when I just launched that offer, I got people inbound clients coming to me for my writing services and I made it a lot easier. But if I was just a broad self-improvement account, blah, 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 I'm like, hey, I'm going to offer writing services. It would be harder. Um, but uh, yeah, so the main thing is is really yeah, picking a skill and teaching on the timeline, teaching what you learn. You don't have to be an expert. You just teach the people a few steps behind and you do that over a long long enough time horizon, you can make a lot of money because you're, again, you're, you're proving your confidence and you're you're getting that audience that is interested in that and that's not the only thing you have to talk about but it's it just make it make something a part of your brand where you can prove your competence and then you can go more broad later on like you can look yeah. at naval ravikant or alex ramosi or any of these big names they can talk about broad content all day long because they've already proved their competence they've shown their value and people know okay they know what they're doing but a lot 100%. of people they haven't they haven't done that so they need to put in the work and they need to prove competence and then you can go more broad later on like dan co like he did the same thing or anyone else like it's a common theme but you have to put in the work first and which a lot of people don't yeah i think two good key takeaways to highlight from that are one some people are just obsessed with the follower count and you're actually doing yourself a disservice by acquiring followers that aren't relevant to what you're trying to put out and that will actually hurt you in the long term and then two is to like some people are always so scared of giving away free content but i feel like some people sometimes need Need to look back and like I'm I'm all for this like believe in yourself like but you also have to be realistic and like think would I pay me for this service now probably not so like go put out that free content go get those like opinions the feelers and things like that and then once it's like relevant once you can actually see the work the quality of it then you go sell that service but everybody's so quick to like I've been tweeting for 30 days straight I now sell like consultative writing services that's like me as a podcaster saying I've been podcasting for two and a half months. Here's my offer for $4,500 and I'll teach you how to launch a podcast. Like, no, no one's going to come take me that serious. But you go out and I've got 400 episodes posted, a good following. Like I would go pay that person a good amount of money to help me stand up my podcast. So that's just me ranting at people not being interested in actually developing the product and putting in the hard work. Everybody just thinks that you could put a month of work and it's like, dude, I worked really hard on that. Like, no, you yeah. didn't. Like go put in six months of free work and build something up from nothing and then then go monetize it and tell me, then you could tell me you put in the work, but that's just me going on a rant. Let's talk about the mentorship portion of this. Dan Co was an important mentor of yours. You then said that you parlayed that into purchasing other mentorships in other areas. Let's maybe start at the Dan Co one and build up to the other ones. Yeah. So start with Dan Co and I got his mentorship because it's really related to him. I, I liked his philosophy and he's just a solid dude. And uh, yeah, so so he helped me kind of one get a clear on like the foundations of like creating content and all that. He helped a lot with that. And then two, he helped me with like how to like the, the fundamentals like marketing and sales and all that stuff. He helped me with that and uh, the accountability too. And it wasn't like, oh, he, he kept me accountable, but paying a large amount of money for a mentor that that lights a fire in your ass. Like, oh crap, I pay this money. I got to get my money's worth. It's not like a yep. course, $40 course or it's like, ah, okay, I'll, whatever, 40 Bucks. It's like you feel that pain point. So it, that's one thing I've done countless times over. Um, other mentors I've gotten, Leon Castillo. That's, uh, I'd say he's probably like one of the top dudes I paid for mentorship. He's a performance coach and awesome. uh, really genuine guy, really cares about the people in his program. And he helped me get aligned on 
on like the direction I'm going and understanding the importance of identity and not just, oh, productivity hacks and all that. You have to, the identity of who you are will determine your habits and all of the productivity stuff. So that was a big one. Um, Klein Ascension, huge shout out to them. Uh, they helped me immensely with running my agency also gave me the idea for the ghostwriting cohort or like validated it i had it in my idea or my head before but i talked to andre but that kind of came to fruition with them um also coaching there now too um who else one guy but he turned out to be a scammer (laughs) so i'm not gonna call him out (laughs) and uh oliver anwar uh i got him as a fitness coach but i've been training for 13 years but i got him as a fitness coach because of the accountability because i just wanted to someone to say hey you're doing this shit you're doing this shit like i know all about fitness but that's why yeah. I, I paid for that because i found myself in a rut at the start of 2023 and i just needed to uh, get that accountability like the common theme for me is i know what to execute on but it's not until i pay money to somebody else that I, I find myself, okay, I got to do this because I paid money and, and they're expecting me to do it. And I find I execute on shit a lot more when I do that. So I, I kind of, I don't know if people can say I'm wasting money, but I, I do that and uh, I've gotten a lot of value from it. But also like the connections you make because, yep. I mean, you're connecting with high level people. You're getting access to their network. You're getting access to them. The reason I, I'm friends with Dan, I'd say close friends with Dan, is because I paid for mentorship, got to know him, eventually moved in together and it was it was great. And then the same thing with like other people too. So like mentors, like people might talk down to it or something if they, they've never had one, but it's honestly life changing if you get the right ones and you do your research on those people. But yeah, I owe everything. I owe everything to my mentors. Yeah. And and something like I harp on a lot in other episodes when we go down in the mentorship rabbit hole, it's like you need to be extremely intentional about the mentor you're seeking out. It shouldn't be, oh, but look how famous this person is or look how many followers they have. Like you never know who's going to be a mentor to you. But when you think that there's one in front of you, go take that, learn from somebody, but be very intentional about selecting somebody that actually helps with where you're going going, not where they're going. A lot of people are like, oh, I want to be like that person. So like they're a good mentor. They might not be anything aligned to you whatsoever and have not the same like aspirations. So why would that person be a good mentor? You were looking at their personality and who they were. Go out and find somebody who aligns with you, who's going to help you excel. And that person doesn't always have to be a famous person or with a big following. It might be your uncle. It might be a friend's dad. Like you never know. The last person that I had on the pod, like the person whose episode released on Monday, Day, Mac, a friend's dad who used to work on Wall Street in high school, threw him a few bones on some stocks to go pick and they went way up. And he's like, whoa, like maybe this is a thing. Now he's a full time trader. Like you never know what person is going to come into your life and like really drop this like knowledge and value on you. And another thing I want to call out is you said you get access to their network. I feel like a lot of people when they go into a paid mentorship, they feel as though it's a lot about the mentor and I need to listen and I don't want to overstep my boundary. But it's it's all about you. Like I go into a mentorship paying the money that is associated with because I will respect that individual that their time is valued. But I'm going in knowing I'm going to make you my friend and that we're going to be we're going to have a relationship post mentorship. And this is not going to be a one and done thing. And that's where things really change because now you're paying for the initial engagement because you're respecting that person for working hard, building a big following and having a value on their time. But you're parlaying that into I'm building up my network of really high level individuals. So I I wanted to like highlight that because I get questions on like, how do you pick a mentor? Like we always talk about mentor on the podcast. Those are really important things to do. And the mindset that you go into these mentorships with is huge. And I know that you understand that because you've been through it and gone and received these mentorships. So I needed to call that out. From a ghostwriting perspective, I had no clue about ghostwriters. I didn't know anything about this till like a month ago. I'm finding out way more. Um, What are your thoughts on ghostwriting in itself? I know there's sometimes negative connotations to it because people are like, oh, I follow this person because of this and that's not even them. Like maybe let's, I, everybody loves to talk about the good stuff. Maybe let's talk about some of the negative things like that come with this job and this service. Oh, hundred percent. So like any industry, there's shitty ghostwriters or shitty people that are into that industry and there's like solid people. So I think the one thing with ghostwriting that is bad or is given a bad rap is a lot of it's just copy paste like a lot of ghostwriters will take content from other people's accounts and then 
then they'll just like copy paste it for their clients. Um, like I, I saw it, I called it out today on, on one person's account. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just it, the problem with ghostwriting is, is it's such an easy field to get into. And because yeah. of that, you get a lot of low tier people that just want to make a quick buck and they don't care how. So they'll, they'll just copy and plagiarize stuff and then or even like write crappy content for the, the client and just they don't care. But if you get a solid ghostwriter, like it's like night and day difference. You have someone that's actually going to sit down with you and interview you and talk about your story and get, ask the right questions. And then they're going to take that and turn that into content. It's it's kind of like the client writes it in a way by talking to you, but you're just piecing it together. You're like the editor. You know, it's like yeah. short form editors. You know, they they don't shoot the film, but they like take it and make it look all sexy and all like that. But yeah, there's a lot of uh, rightfully so. There's a lot of cri criticism with a lot of ghostwriters uh, because they're just doing these shitty templates like they'll maybe like somebody's <laughs> in in uh some niche where maybe it's like e-com or something but then they make a chat gpt thread for their client and it's just totally like off kilter with the brand and it just doesn't it doesn't match because they're just riding trends also they don't tell the story of their client they're just chasing trends and they maybe they're getting those cheap followers that are into the trend and all that but they're they're investing in the trend not the person and the problem is when the trend dies out so does that person's following because yep. essentially you've just set them up for that so you'll notice with really skilled ghostwriters they're the ones asking questions about their clients they're getting like a deep understanding of transformations they've went through failures they've went to went through and overall who they are as a person they tell that story I mean, the main thing is the story and the personality and educating people on the lessons that that client has learned and sharing that because that's what builds brand and it, it is hard to do it is hard to yeah. do it does take a lot more time but that's going to build you a brand and not a following. So I guess for context, for anybody listening, and, and this can serve as two things. One, this can serve as like, I'm just interested and want to learn more. Two, this can serve as I'm a potential customer and I want to learn more about something like this. What does the vetting process look like? Like I reach out to you right now. I have 50,000 followers. I'm a CEO. I don't have time to tweet about my e-com site. What is the process for you to vet me, like go through that to make me a client? And how are you going to go and put out that quality work that makes it look like it's me? Because I'm sure. I yeah. know like people have this question because ghostwriting, like those buzzwords, but like, I love to uncover what's behind the door. Like when people get the process, they can wrap their head around what the service really is. Yeah. So first off, first thing I look for is, is this person interesting to me? Because I don't want to write for anybody I don't find interesting. So I get a lot of e-com guys or crypto guys, SEO guys hitting me up to write for their account. But I just don't find them interesting. And I don't want to create content that's like, oh, this is boring. Like I, I, I have a few interesting clients that live interesting lives and have interesting personalities. And it's like, yeah, I, I enjoy this. So That's the fun stuff. Exactly. Right. You know, and it's cool because you get to essentially get free consulting from them in whatever their domain is. And you get to ask them questions like these people are very typically the people looking for ghostwriters are very successful people and they just want to get more influence or maybe make more sales. But you get to sit down and ask them any question you want because you're creating content. So you're getting free consult calls and it's, it's pretty cool. I became friends with all my my clients and it's cool if I ever need something, I just hit them up or I got a question. It's it's, uh, it's really cool the the world you're introduced to. Um, but yeah, so that's the first thing. Also, like, are they financially qualified? So with ghostwriting, you're not just writing the content. Typically, you're also paying for distribution and that can come in the form of paying for retweets. It can come in the form of paying for LinkedIn comments in the form of buying Instagram story shares. Uh, stuff like that. So typically, uh, when I, I I charge between three thousand and seven thousand dollars a month per client. Uh, I started with three k, then I upped it, and then I also upsold people to Instagram too. Whereas like one time I was charging like twelve k a month for a client or. I've done deals where it's like uh, $25,000 to get them to 10,000 followers, $35,000 to get them to whatever followers. Um, so there's different ways you can structure it. But yeah, typically I, I work with people that are making like uh, multiple six figures or seven or eight figures a year. And yeah. And then what else? Also, like, are, what are their goals? I want to know, yeah. can I even help them? 
So a lot of people have hit me up and they're looking to, I don't know, get a bunch of leads for something I have no clue about. And like, okay, like I'll just refer you to somebody else because I I don't feel confident. I, I don't feel good charging you money when I'm not sure if I can get the results. So uh, that's another thing. And then are they ethical? Like I don't take on people that are known scammers or stuff like that. I don't want to be associated with that, nor I do, do I want to promote that. So yeah, I find it's, uh, yeah, interesting. Are they interesting? Are they financially qualified? Are their goals aligned? And are they a good person? And if the, the, typically, if they hit that, it's like, okay, uh, I, I want to work. And so like when hiring like a, a high quality ghostwriter like yourself, I'm not only paying for your writing skills, but I'm also paying for the connections and the retweets of people within your network and things like that. Um, yep. Is that is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Awesome. I mean, I think it's an awesome industry. At the end of the day, if the ghostwriter is a real like quality worker individual, like you will do your due diligence, you will grind and you will be able to put out content that is pretty damn close to what that individual would probably say themselves. And you're allowing them to get a voice. So I, I love it. And l- let's talk about the business side of it now. Like you have these high ticket offers. We talked about your um, ghostwriting cohort, um, growth ghosts. Let- let's Let's highlight that. How does that work? Give us the background. Yeah, so for the cohort, uh, is the co- is the growth ghost the cohort or is yeah, that like I, I call it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of just put it all in the same thing. Yeah, but okay. um, yeah. yeah. So for so you're talking about like the done for you or the done with you like coaching program. It could be either just growth oh, okay, ghosts yeah. in general, like that yeah, on, yeah. that business. Yeah, yeah. So um, for the done for you, yeah, it's basically uh, when I take on a client, it's have like a two hour interview with them once a month, get all the info, turn it into content, the schedule for them, pay for retweets. That's like the general process. And then for the coaching program or the mentorship program where I show people how to start the business, um, it's quite intensive. It's like a six month program. Uh, The first month is all about, okay, here's how you actually grow your social media. Because if you don't know how to grow your social media, you have no business charging other people. It's like having a fat personal trainer. It just doesn't make sense, right? that's a big problem with ghostwriters in the industry. They're they put ghostwriter in their bio, but they got like 50 followers. <laughs> that's why I they're not that. landing clients. Yeah, it's funny. It's, it's funny like, as hell, man. It's I'll bring you followers, cool. but I'll bring you followers, but I've got 50 followers myself. It's like, I always yeah. respond to those people. How come you haven't done it for yourself? Question mark. And I never yeah. get an answer back. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a big problem. So like the, the first month of the cohort is focused solely on that. And I show them, okay, here's how you write. Here's the strategy for or Twitter. Here's how you write threads. Here's how you want to think about your brand, all of that. And I really, one big thing too, is I'm not just setting them up as ghostwriters, but I'm setting them up so they have a long-term brand. So if they ever want to shift from ghostwriting to copywriting to email marketing or anything, they have the fundamentals and they can make that pivot because they built a brand that people know, like, and trust. So that's the first month. And the second month, we focus on the ghostwriting systems and the business side of everything. So here's how you talk on sales calls. I give them a plug and play sales script as a guideline. I give them all the systems so they know how to like automate stuff and kind of delegate and all of that. Uh, Here's how you market yourself. So here's how you uh, structure your landing page. Here's how you get leads. Here's how you do outreach, all of that stuff. Um, And I also have guest master classes from people in the other domains that way more experts than than I am. So sales uh, have landing page, uh, writing. Uh, people in marketing, lead gen, productivity, all that stuff. And they come on, do live guest master classes, which is really cool. And um, yeah, then like the third, fourth, fifth, sixth month is just all about execution because I'm a big believer in, okay, you don't need like more information. Like you you have all the fundamentals. Now you just need to execute and be consistent. Um, so yeah, and it's all, we got like this big community um, on a platform called Heartbeat. It's like Circle and Discord had a love child. Cool. And uh I've never heard of that real. platform. Interesting. Yeah. It's, it's sick. It's sick, dude. Um, okay. But yeah. Check that out. Yeah. I'm a huge yeah, Discord just, fan, so I'm sure I love it. Dude, so it blows out of the water. It's way better. <laughs> All right. Now you got to put that on the agenda. Um, so you've done a great job of explaining ghostwriting, what you've done, and then the services you offer and all of this. For someone who's listening and wants to, A, become a client of yours, what should they do? And then for someone listening who wants to maybe potentially join that cohort or 
or start to learn how to do it themselves, how should they do that as well? Yeah. So one, if you want to be a client of mine, you can't because I <laughs> just don't want to take any on any more clients. But if you reach out to me, then I can refer you to a ghostwriter. And you can do that on Telegram's probably best because my DMs are flooded. Uh, wrongs to write, W-R-I-T-E. And then two, if someone wants to join the cohort or mentorship, then... You can go onto my social medias and you'll see me promoting it. Uh, we do close doors at uh, July 1st. But right now, up until then, we're taking on calls, uh, applications. Um, but yeah, you'll see me like promote it on my social media. Um, so yeah, Twitter at wrongs to right. And then Instagram, yo Dakota or yo Dakota, whatever you want to say. Uh, those are my main platforms. <laughs> The Star Wars fan is definitely going to say Yoda Coda. <laughs> yeah, that's, the, I, I'm, yeah, that's what I had in mind too. Is like, I, it, yeah. it is Yoda Coda, but I, I do like Yoda Coda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, something I like to do as we kind of wrap up the episode, and I do this at the end of everyone, um, and I ask a super simple question. Don't overthink this. Answer it personally, business wise, like literally I've gotten the craziest answers. And the question is, what are you Dakota excited about in the near future? I building a huge education company. That's my, I believe education is the key to freedom. It's one thing people can't take away from you. And it's the reason it's what allows you to be free. And it's been a huge part of any success I've had in life. And I it's developed my relationships in every facet of my life. Um, so I want to help others live a life like doing what you want, living how you want, living where you want, waking up when you want. Um, but yeah, I'm just really scaling my brand as an educational brand that's my passion oh that that's a great answer definitely one of the best and i love how i could tie this all the way back to the first like three minutes of the episode where you said you wanted to become a teacher you did become a teacher just not the traditional one but yeah. i want to say i'm a firm believer in i think social media is going to continue to propel as like a, an amazing way to go get education i encourage anybody around me to lean in um you can learn so much amazing things by following the right people on social media we need to stop looking at social media as just this social fun application. You can get so much value from it and actually turn some low ROI habits into high ROI habits. And I am a huge advocate for that. So love that answer. Um, I just want to say thank you. Like it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Amazing to learn. I know that we're going to continue to stay connected and just like you enjoy the aspect of meeting new clients um, through ghostwriting. That's why I did podcasting. My number one passion was to continue to grow my network and meet amazing people and get to ask them questions that I might have not been able to otherwise. So again, thank you so much for coming on the show. It has been an absolute pleasure to meet you and have you on. Damn straight, brother. I appreciate you having me on too and the, the thoughtful questions. Awesome. Thank you.